building in Honeybee or how to model it. And um, the theory behind a mixed mode building is that we can take advantage of natural ventilation whenever possible and just use heating and cooling when the climate does not, uh, when the climate is more extreme. And so to take this example here, um, well, relative to the last runs that I showed you, I've actually turned off, disconnected my um, zero infiltration and zero ventilation, and I'm going, gone back to the default infiltration and ventilation for this uh, large office classroom. And you can see that in this climate, the classroom is tending to require a lot of cooling in the midday, in the summertime, and then a little bit of heating in the mornings in the winter, but not a lot. Uh, most of it, it predominantly is overheating. And this question of can we reduce the cooling needs in order to and still make this more comfortable uh, is one that we're going to confront here to see if we can change these into uh, do we can use natural ventilation to replace the cooling that's going on here. Now I should point out that I've already um, used a economizer with uh, demand um, demand controlled ventilation and a 70% efficient heat recovery unit. So this is as much as the um, ideal air system can uh, can provide the economizer and ideal air system. But what happens if I supplement with increased ventilation? Um, and so I'm going to make a theoretical exhaust fan that can produce, that can exhaust as much air as we want. And, um, and we'll see hypothetically if we had um, a infinite amount of natural ventilation when or how much ventilation could we get? How much cooling can we reduce? So the first step here is to make a schedule that mimics this schedule of cooling. And um, right now the set, set point thermostat is at 28 degrees from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. In order to um, control the natural ventilation or the, the exhaust fan, I'm going to relax this 28 degrees, or I'm going to actually make it tighter. So instead of 28 degrees, I'm going to make it 24 degrees. And this is going to um, uh, give us a better schedule for um, uh, setting our, um, our fan. And I'm going to just keep this as the cooling setback thermostat. I'm going to rerun this here and we should see the cooling increase, uh, the air conditioning increase, uh, after this gets done running. Bam. So we saw the, the cooling increase or air conditioning increase and we saw the uh, comfort get better uh, so lower temperatures inside um, and we're going to use this to control when natural ventilation comes in so to do that we're going to convert the uh, cooling output the cooling energy output uh, to a schedule for uh, ventilation so I'm going to take my cooling that's coming out right there and I'm going to capture it with, maximize this, I'm going to capture it with this um, ladybug component called deconstruct data. I'm going to drop it over here and attach the cooling to it. And I'm going to set up a recorder to record the values from there. I'm going to put that into a panel and that is going to give us all the hours of the year when the cooling is on. So in the uh, 1169th hour we've got a tiny bit of cooling. As we get towards the summer I imagine we're going to get more you know according to the graph you can see yeah in here we've got a whole lot more cooling required. Once I've captured that I'm going to disconnect this. Oops that connected it twice. This is important too. Don't connect it twice because you'll get, you know, double the number of values. 
you want to make sure you've only got 8760 values in here so if you do this like i just did press x so that there's nothing there and then reconnect and you'll get those and just make sure you've just got 8760 it says 59 because the first one is zero and then i'm going to disconnect that this will save those um, and this also means that now I can turn off my uh, run and um, I won't, you know, this isn't collecting any data anymore, but this one is uh, still saved. Now from here, I want to create a function so that every time I see a um, number like there, it's not a, a, a number, but it's a one. So it's just going to be a zero or a one. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to evaluate function. Is that right? Yeah, I just need to delete that. And I want to pass a number into that function. These are all native grasshopper components, by the way, like that. Uh, this will help to tell this that this is a number, not um, a string of text. And then for the function, I'm going to make a if statement. So if um, x is I'll make if x is greater than zero, then I want it to say one. I want it to print one, and otherwise I want it to print x. So that's my function there, and I'm going to plug that in there. And so what I should get out of that is a schedule of just zeros and ones showing so for instance 1645 oops it's hard to control this oh, come on oh, god i feel like i'm working here Come on. So 1645 is right there, and it's a 1. So it converted that 7.5 times 10 to the 16th, minus 16th, or times 10 to the 16th, to 1. Uh, so it's all zeros and ones, this entire schedule. And I go to the summertime, you can see it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So that's great because that is going to tell us when we want to make our natural ventilation available. So I'm going to just label this and not vent availability schedule and to make a schedule out of this I need to I think we did this in another video go to honeybee energy and click on schedules and we need a fixed interval schedule like this and so these are the values that go into this the time step is automatically set to one hour the analysis period is for the whole year and then the name of this schedule, I'm going to call it event cooling sk schedule. Oops. There. Uh, the type limit is automatically default to a fraction. So out of this, I have got a schedule, and this is going to eventually go into a natural ventilation object. Um, in fact, why don't we start with that now? I'm going to clean this up just a bit. So I'm going to add these natural ventilation objects onto the canvas. There is a window opening in Honeybee uh, that's under the loads uh, category. And then there's also ventilation control. And we'll need both of these. So ventilation control just gets hooked up to ventilation control right there. And then the rooms needs to get hooked up to the rooms way over on the other side of the canvas. So I'm going to take all of these and transport them back here. They need to get plugged in before this model component. So this rooms is going to go into there and out of there. And um, that's going to add the windows to it. The schedule that we made here I'm going to plug in right to there and then this uh, minimum indoor temperature is the minimum temperature that um, the, that we'll be using for that the 
Let me we'll back up a second. This is a ventilation control it is going to control when the windows actually open and close. The schedule that we set up gives their availability. And right now it's set to be available whenever the cooling system would have been 24 degrees Celsius or higher in the thermostat. Um, the temperature of, of this ventilation controller, we can set uh, to be any temperature we want, but we want to make sure it doesn't overlap with the heating or cooling system because otherwise we'll have the windows open while it's heating or cooling and that will result in a lot of extra energy. So just to be safe, the minimum side I'm going to do is 23 degrees Celsius. I think our heating is set to be 20 degrees Celsius. And then our maximum I'm going to set to be 27 degrees Celsius because we're going to reset our cooling thermostat to be 28 degrees. Um, we're going to also set a minimum outdoor temperature um, below which the windows won't open because if it's very, very cold outside, then you, it's really uncomfortable to have windows open. So I'm going to set that to be 12 degrees Celsius. And then I'm not going to set a maximum outdoor temperature because effectively the windows are never going to open if, um, well, um, actually hold that thought for a second. Um, there's this delta temperature. So delta indicates the difference between the outdoor and the indoor temperature. If I set a delta temperature of one degree Celsius, it means that the windows will only open if the outdoor temperature is one degree Celsius cooler than the outdoor temperature, or sorry, the outdoor temperature is one degree cooler than the indoor temperature. I'm going to set this to be 0 0.5 degrees there. And that means that if our max indoor temperature is set to 27 degrees, then the um, maximum temperature we're going to have uh, effectively from the outdoors is um, 26 and a half degrees. So we don't really need to set this maximum outdoor temperature because um, it's never going to go past this minus that. Um, okay, so before I forget, I should probably uh, rehook up our 28 degree thermostat set points there. Uh, this one we're, we're just not going to use uh, anymore. We've, it's done its duty. And then um, I think that these are probably all good to go. Uh, one more note here is that we can control the fraction of the opening area of the windows with this component here. So I'll show you what that means is that you know, we've got this, um, all these different windows by orientation and along the skylight. And right now, as a default, it sets it to be 0.550%. So meaning that the area of um, opening is 50% of the window area. This assumes like a sliding window. Uh, if we had a, um, a window that could completely retract like a um, casement or like a car window, uh, we could set this to be 100. Um, or if we had just an awning window, we could set it to be like 10%. Um, this is uh, totally up to you what you set. Uh, for the assignment, I've given you spe specific values. Uh, so for now, I'm going to set it to be 0.5 so you can get a sense of how this works. The height, uh, fractional height, is um, going to give the, uh, the difference between the bottom of the window and the top um, that, is, that is operable. Um, and we're not going to touch this for this exercise. We're just going to keep it at 1. And then the discharge coefficient is something that we can set manually or we can, um, uh, well, yeah, we can set manually depending on, uh, to account for the um, stack ventilation um, resistance to stack ventilation. So zero would be to completely not account for uh, stack ventilation in the uh, calculation 
and 0.45 is the default. That's what we're going to go with. And then finally, the uh, wind and cross ventilation um, uh, Boolean toggle is a toggle when it's false, it will assume that there is not cross ventilation. And when it's true, it will assume that there is cross ventilation. Uh, and I'd like you to compare the difference between the two in your um, simulations. So let's go ahead and run this and see what results we get. Okay, so let's take a look at the graphs. Um, so first of all, we can see the cooling energy has gone way, way down. The heating energy looks to have gone up a little bit. And then the, the zone temperatures you can see on occasion are uh, exceeding 28 degrees Celsius, uh, but it's far less than it was in the previous uh, simulation that we looked at. We can also look to see that the mechanical ventilation is doing its job uh, with the economizer and demand controlled ventilation, but we don't get a sense in this of how much ventilation we're getting from the windows, because this is just mechanical, this is just the, the economizer. So in order to look at that, we need to go down to our output results that we had before, the zone ventilation air change rate, plug that into this custom component, and now we can see that the pattern of um, window openings that we're getting with a uh, scale of 128, so that's the maximum air change rate, is quite large. Uh, we're getting gusts of wind through there at times, probably. And uh, for the most part, it looks to be in this light blue area, which is probably 25 to, to 40 uh, air changes per hour or so. So that's a, a, a fair amount of air changes through the zone, a lot more than we would get from the economizer. Um, and in fact, I would guess that we are, that's a, interesting, so that the heating and cooling, of uh, the heating has gone up slightly, the cooling has gone down. And the reason for the heating going up is that we're probably overcooling the space. Um, and of course the cooling is going down because we're overcooling the space. Um, so all that looks like it's in order and gives us a good sense of the benefits that we're getting from that natural ventilation. Another thing to point out and important to check here is, is the zone uncomfortable at times? And uh, again, I really want to check this. How often is it over 28 degrees? I'm going to put this in here and see. And it does look like there's a fair amount of times when the operative temperature is over 30. If we look at the air temperature here, uh, these are probably, I'm guessing, just the weekends when we're seeing these little strips here or unoccupied uh, hours. So, um, but it's still important to point out that the, uh, these, these times are uncomfortable or potentially uncomfortable with the radiant temperature and um, we might want to adjust some of the materials or insulation or um, the sort of reactivity of the interior to the environment around it.